Hello everyone, uh, thank you for joining. Uh, today we're going to have a demo uh, regarding the Cruise Operations Center. I'm going to start off the demo by uh, talking about how you're going to have high level visibility to all of your infrastructure um, in a couple of different ways and then we will drill into the individual features um, as we move throughout the demo. Um, what you're seeing on the screen right now is uh, just a basic topology you get with uh, just by the simple fact that you've discovered your equipment. Uh, you're automatically going to get a, uh, um, a layout similar to this showing your devices and your links. Now the background image is something that is imposed uh, manually if you want to put a, a geographic image or a, it could be an office building, a locate, uh, office floor, um, whatever it is, you can move elements around, save them to even more of a context and then impose that in the background here uh, to give you a little more context about your, um, your, your layout here. Um, but uh, what you can do from this screen is uh, drive a lot of the work if, uh, if you're more visually driven with a simple right-click option. For example, I can I can uh, drill into a device and for example, you're seeing event states on here. You'll see things like a red, yellow, blue. Those are all events that are rolling up to the device or the link. You'll see some red and yellow links here. Uh, they're rolling up to the, uh, the appropriate component uh, indicating visually what's going on here. So with a simple right-click, I can go to a details panel. You immediately see that happened to be uh, more of a link level here. Um, information about the link and what's going on, any alarms that might be associated to it. Um, if I went to the, uh, uh, the device itself and got details, uh, we're going to see uh, information directly related to that device. Key metrics monitor, reference tree showing all of the information discovered. Monitors against the device that are active. I'm seeing on the left a whole bunch of just general information, information about power supplies and fans in the middle. Even the authentication uh, objects that are being used to manage this device. Um, and so just for a quick troubleshooting, you have access to direct access to go and do a terminal session here to the CLI. Uh, you can do a mid browser cut through. Uh, you can ping the device. If it has a web interface, you would have an HTTPS cut through here. Uh, but on the network tab, you can see all things related to networking, ports, interfaces, VLANs, VLANs by ID, associated links, even connected devices, uh, um, items that are connected to that particular device. And then there's lots of uh, options here to do various functionality here against the particular objects to help you troubleshoot further. Um, of course, you're going to see the alarms tab, which is going to show you the relevant alarms that we saw reflected on that screen. Uh, a variety of things you can do with that in terms of uh, assigning it, clearing it, um, looking at the details, even emailing it to somebody if you need to. Um, on the history tab, we're going to have uh, things related to tracking of things that have happened to this device. For example, the audit trail, we're going to track everything that's happened within the application, things like you see here. Uh, it was backed up at one point, so we did a resync and other backups sort of thing. But all of this is tracked in the system. Regardless of the activity, you'll see that in here and in allowing you sort of a way to track back and see what's happened, who provided, you know, who provisioned a command on the box or that kind of thing. Um, execution history is going to show you any other actions that are on there, and then you're going to see the latest configurations that it's been backed up recently. And then there's performance. Uh, if you want to get high-level performance on a particular node, you're going to see that here as well. You can see just straight out performance uh, from an ICMP perspective or even top talkers if you need to. And then there's a maintenance tab to even go and do maintenance info if you want to create logs of activities of things that need to happen against the device. Um, you have that here as well. And you can actually report on those logs if you want to generate a report and provide that to somebody at some point. Uh, so this is one way to see your, your, uh, your uh, view here. All these views are exportable to Visio if you need to. You can link views if you want to jump to another view. Um, other views that you just saw a glimpse of it here, um, this happens to be uh, um, uh, using our hierarchy node structure where you can create nodes as you see here where you can define these nodes on however you want uh, to organize your infrastructure. It could be by IP address, it could be by a subnet, it could be by a naming convention or location. Uh, just about any way you want to carve out your infrastructure, you can create a node for it. It could be by model of device, you know, it just depends. And uh, but what you can do is you'll see this uh, structure here um, where um, you'll see the event rolling up to the top level here. So you'll see this is red at this level, and then that level rolls up to the top level here. And so you get a quick indicator if you have a large tree, something like this here, um, you would see, um, you know, if you have a lot of locations, you would quickly pinpoint where your critical, where your criti critical items are at. But in this case here, I'm, for example, looking at the sales office, and it's drawing me a picture of an image that I've saved here, showing me my AP locations. And I'm seeing their relative layout here with some links. They're kind of faint here, um, but you're seeing the link uh, for everything that's in that location. And of course, I have those same right-click options to go and drill into the details and see various things about that uh, device or devices. 
Another thing that you're getting on these views here, and you'll see this throughout the product, as I click on a location or a node or a row in a table, it's populating the other items on the page. And so I'm seeing here just the managed resources, the devices for that location. So that's everything on the map. And of course, I have a bunch of right-click options that I can do here to do various activities against those devices. Um, you're also seeing just alarms specific to that area. And so again, giving you that more contextual kind of view. Another, another view for, uh, you know, the first view I showed you was probably for smaller environments, maybe less than two to 300 devices. As you start getting bigger, these hierarchy views become into play. Uh, you may also want, if you're very large looking, uh, you may be interested in a geographic sort of layout here where, uh, where you can actually see um, on a Google map basically your, uh, the way your uh, infrastructure is laid out in terms of locations. And so you'll see, you're seeing here each of these nodes are now tagged in a specific area um, uh, based on their location. And now you're seeing uh, the events for those locations also. And you can drill in and get more granular if you want to there. Um, but for example, I'll click on Abilene, Texas here. You'll see all the components in there. But as I click the top level node, now I'm seeing a Google map of just that location. And I'm seeing basically an, an indicator here for the switch closet, maybe the APs, where they're located. And again, all the contextual stuff down below, it's showing me what's going on in that location. The next way to get visibility here is on your resources tab where you're seeing just basically everything in your environment. Um, and it's just basically rows of information here. And uh, I'll just pick a sample device here. Um, let me just pick one here out of the box. So um, this uh, particular device here, you'll notice as I click on it, um, all of the ports over here and the interfaces and the connected devices actually load automatically based on what I've clicked here. So I can gain that context feel for it. But what you can do is drive a lot of your work from this screen as well if, you're, if, you, if you choose to. So with a simple right-click option, you'll have access to all the features we're going to talk about today. Either to do it on demand for this device or you can multi-select in this screen and do the same thing. So just at a high level here, we can talk about the details of the device. We can drill into that from here we just saw. We can put it on a topology. We can manage credentials. We can manage management states of this device if we want to decommission it, suspend it for maybe, a, maybe for event purposes, we want to suspend it for a while. Um, you know, just depends what you want to do there. Update credentials, add management interfaces. Um, you can run actions here. So if you want to push a command to the box, uh, there are seated commands, but you can create your own commands here and push them right up to the box. These actions, by the way, are also available with a simple right click on ports or interfaces where you can run actions, for example, to put a VLAN on one or more ports if you need to. We'll talk about those when we get to the automation and actions page. Um, you can do change determination, change management. This is where you're going to detect drift on the configuration related to that device. Um, so you can interrogate the uh, if it's changed since the last time it was checked and uh, be notified if something has changed. Kind of a deeper level of that is our compliance policies where you can actually uh, specify what you want to have on your configuration files or not have in your configuration file. And it will scan for that. And, uh, and, and then a, a compliance policy violation of that, if that kind of thing, if something is found to be out of compliance. Again, here you can also go to direct access and go to a web browser, a terminal session, right at the CLI. Um, you can also, if you hit that has a web interface like an iDRAC, BMC, or a switch that has a web interface, would have you have an HTTP interface here where you could actually go to the directly to the web console for that device. You can do various things um, um, like on-demand, uh, alarm suppression, start, stop, and schedule. Um, on the file management side, you can back up the device uh, or devices, again, with multi-select, um, uh, or compare uh, the device's configuration from the last one. Um, or you can even deploy firmware directly from here if you need to. You can see links. You can see performance about the device, top level, uh, top talkers if it has interfaces, or even key metrics for CPU, memory, and disk, um, and those kind of things. Um, and then moving down here, we have uh, things like traffic flow analyzer. If it's a if it's a an endpoint that's in, uh, in traffic flow is being detected, and this is part of that flow, then uh, you can actually see traffic related to that particular component. Okay, that's a kind of a high level there on how to see devices. Um, down below here, as I mentioned, there's connected devices. You can search by MAC or IP address. We also have a search by MAC or IP address here down below on the right, where you can even locate those things. Uh, this allows you to easily see what Mac is associated with what port you're uh, troubleshooting or those kind of things. Um, the next thing I'm going to talk about is the configuration management. This is the area where we're going to manage our configuration files and, uh, and do firmware deployment. 
So um, in here, you'll notice, I'll just click on a device here, a Cisco device as an example here. You'll notice that my configuration file is automatically populated on the right here, showing me what, um, what my configurations are. I can easily come in here and multi-select a couple of these rows here. I don't want to do two there. And then just do a, uh, let me focus on that. And do a compare selected. And it's easily going to point out the differences between two files. Now, the, the color coding will be different if something's been added, removed, or changed. But here you can see there's a couple of changes there. It's just quickly highlighting that. So that, that really gives you a nice ability to troubleshoot a configuration if you suspect the configuration change may be responsible for maybe a, a problem you're looking at. Very easy to come in here and take a configuration file and simply edit it and uh, add some, uh, some value in here. And I'm going to just put some junk in here. Um, you know, here's my policy xxx. Maybe I want to change some value here, y y y, or whatever change I want to make in this config file. I would simply come in here and make that change in here, save it. Then you'll notice I have a version three up here that's now ready for me to compare, or I can simply right click and restore that very easily back out to that device. So it's a very quick way for you to put configuration back on the network. This is meant to be a dashboard for all of those sorts of things uh, related to configuration management. You'll see alarms in the middle. This is where you're going to see all the alarms related to backup, restore, and deploy. Um, uh, you'll notice on this right click option up here, you have the option to uh, uh, um, um, promote a configuration if you want to create a template out of it. Uh, you can actually back up to labels. And so this is the way you baseline your configuration. You can actually back up multiple devices or 100 devices, whatever it is, to a label. For example, gold or compliant, call it whatever you want. And now all of those have a persisted configuration by that label. If you ever get into a problem where you need to restore one or more devices, you say simply restore my gold label or my compliant label, wherever my base configuration is, and it will push those out to multiple devices just based on that label name. So it's a nice way for you to recover possibly when you need to restore, uh, just restore many devices all at once. Down below, we have schedules related to configuration management, and then in the image repository area is where we have our firmware. And so um, it's simply a matter of coming in here, and if you have a specific firmware, simply select it, uh, do a right click, and then say deploy. And then you simply come in here and add specific equipment you want to add to your deployment, or actually groups. And so we have static or dynamic grouping that you can use to automatically push those out. Simply set your equipment or your groups and then uh, simply schedule it um, to deploy and it will push that out to all those devices all at the same time. Or you can execute on demand and it will just do it, um, do it on demand. So this can be firmware for a switch, it can be BIOS for an iDRAP for example, it could be BIOS for a client, it's all the same process. Alternatively, you could go to the specific device over here and do file management and then deploy from here. In this case, it's going to ask you uh, what, uh, since you've already specified the device and it's already pre-populated, it's going to ask you to find the, uh, the firmware that you want to uh, put onto that. You would simply come in here and select the appropriate firmware. If it's appropriate, it will turn green here, letting you know, and then you'll be able to deploy that as well that way. So a couple of, of options to do that. If firmware is not in here, we see a lot of the Dell firmware uh, or uh, uh, as a vendor, but you can also pull in new firmware here simply by going to new firmware image and pulling it off your drive. Um, but once it's pulled in here, it will be uh, freely available for you to deploy just like any other firmware. On this page as well, we have reports related to uh, configuration file changes. Uh, there's ways to uh, come in here and look at changes, get firmware reports. Um, you know, obviously we're interested in that uh, um, in terms of this, this screen. And so uh, if you want to report and get all the firmware versions for everything, you simply report on it. Or if you deployed it and you want to see what's changed, you simply see that on the change report. You'll notice on this screen too that we have uh, specific columns related to firmware versions. So you're going to see them all here. Uh, when it was last backed up, last deployed, next deployed, those kind of things are all here. So these are an easy reference for you, especially if you're doing firmware uh, version checking and making sure they're all um, you know, the right version. You can simply come in here and sort by these columns and find what, find what you're looking for. On the compliance side, uh, this is closely related to configuration, but this is the ability to set specific policies um, um, that you can scan for. And um, um, yeah, some simple, simple examples are if you want to, for example, make sure that SNMP v3 is configured to your specification, or maybe you want to make sure v2 community public is not in the box, or maybe you want to make sure Telnet is not configured, but you do have SSH configuration. Those are all things you can put into a policy and scan. Uh, configuration files if you want to and 
And basically, when things are found to be to not fit your criteria, you'll get a compliance uh, violation. You'll see an event here in the compli compliance violation area, um, in the compliance alarms. You'll see some here, some failure notifications, um, letting you know that something is going on. Now, we'll talk about automation in the next uh, section here, but you can hook any event in here to um, whether it's an event from the network or uh, an internal event like a compliance failure or backup failure. Uh, those are internal events. You can hook any kind of event to an automation to go, say, email to somebody or to send it up to ServiceNow, or you can even take actions on the network to go and, and do things like, you know, restore the box to a compliant label or restore or push an, a an action back to the box. So a variety of things you can do. They're very powerful, though. Um, these compliance policies aren't limited to configuration files. You can actually scan the output of a command. For example, you might have an action, which we'll talk about the actions next, but a show command might be something like show LLVP neighbors. There may be something on that screen that you're looking for that you want to scan for compliance. Um, and so you can actually scan that with the same criteria. Just, you just set your criteria policy to scan that output and would go scan it. Um, but the nice thing about um, the, uh, our automation framework, which is coming next year, is that you can, you can actually hook in compliance remediation actions. Now, these actions, you could have an action to remediate a compliance failure um, automatically, or I'm sorry, manually, but um, you can also do it um, automatically in, in response to one of these failure events. Again, we'll talk about it on the next screen. But an example here is, is you, know, you have a, a compliance policy that says SMP community public is not valid on my network, I want to know about that. Well, when, I, when that policy fails, this, policy, this failure event can, can, can trigger an automated action, or you can come in here and simply run the action script that resolves that and pushes the command back out to the box that says no SNMP community public, and it removes it from the configuration, bringing it back into compliance. Or you could restore it, that base configure, that compliant config again, to bring it back into compliance as well. So I'll talk about actions more on the next page here. We also have reports down here at the bottom that are uh, focused around compliance violations, uh, uh, configuration changes, if you're interested in knowing uh, when, uh, if you get a change um, detection event, um, you can trigger this report to be executed or executed on demand. I'll actually show you the differences in the two configuration, what snippets were added or removed from the configuration, immediately alerting you to what, you know, what changes uh, were made, so you don't have to do the manual, you know, dip and compare. So moving over to the automation side, um, we're going to first talk about actions here. Those remediation actions that I talked about were just uh, just actions here, the same sort of thing. Um, but on the action side, we see just real, literally hundreds and hundreds of actions here out of the box. And so these can be executed from the resource manage resources, and I can uh, and that was that manage resources page down here at the bottom is the same ones we saw before. Uh, but I could come in here and just simply right click and go to actions. And it's going to show me a list of actions. Depending on the device, it will bring up just something in one of these one of these actions that you show here. And for example, Cisco, you will see these here for show commands. There's a variety of other things that will show up here, and you can create your own here. Show commands, configuration commands. You can put attributes in these, you know, to uh, go and put the configuration out there for the common things you might do. This will actually lets you standardize your uh, the way people are putting configuration on your network as well. So you can. Basically, hard code in uh, maybe a description is saying you know provision from Cruise Operation Center at a certain time, and you might even put the user in there if you want, you know, so you know what's happening and when on your on your configuration. So that's just one example. Um, other other options here not so uh, prevalent here. Creating templates from here, run external executables, Perl scripts. You can even do JSON scripting if you have a target that supports JSON. Um, so those are just some examples of actions. Um, very easy to, 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 to uh, create. You can simply cut and paste the commands or the, the syntax, just as if you were on a putty command line, just paste it right into your script. And you can put you can just put it in like that if you want a hard-coded action, or you can place attributes in places if you need a string to be put in, or maybe a description or a name or an IP address. You can put those kind of attributes in the script as well um, as you need to. So those actions um, are very powerful, but you can also hook them into our automation and event processing rules to do various things. So just real quickly on our um, autom automation rules, there's the various things here you can do. Um, if you want to escalate syslogs, you know, maybe you don't want every syslog from every device coming in, maybe you want specific ones. Well, you can escalate and, and uh, this will allow you to control which ones are actually uh, forwarded and seen in our alarm window, uh, you know, based on an alarm, a syslog as an alarm. Um, or you can do stream-based, which is, you know, if you want to control how, you know, if something's happening, you know, you don't want it to trigger an event until it happens maybe 10 times, 
well, that's a frequency. Or if you maybe a state flood or maybe a, a port is flapping up, down, up, down, and you don't really care about that until it does it five times in a row then and at the event. And those are those kind of uh, um, processing rules. And then you can always, you know, override events or reject events or suppress events or reset severity, depending on a variety of things, where it comes from, what device it's coming from, or those kind of things. Um, but then the automation rules are the real powerful part where we can take any event in the system, and if you want to add additional filter criteria, you can, like, you know, if you want to say my automation is going to be triggered by a link down and it only comes from a certain IP address or subnet or device, um, you can add additional filter criteria based on that or by bar buying of the event that you're using. Uh, but ultimately what this comes down to is the automation will trigger some action, and I'll just give you an example here. I'm just going to put in some garbage here and go to next. But once you define and specify the event, specify the filtering conditions, you're going to say what actions here. You're going to say, I want it to email somebody. I want it to then maybe perform some action. It could be a backup of a device. It could be uh, the show command. It could be execute a report and email it off. Anything could be like that could be done. And one or more of these things can be done in parallel. You just list them all here, simply save it, and then that automation will automatically trigger. That allows you to really refine, you know, no events so that they're really coming in. You're just seeing the important things, not just getting everything in the system and having to triage it in some way. It allows you to have that granularity. You can also group your actions over here. If you have multiple actions you want to run, either parallel or, sequ or sequential, you can simply uh, package those up and, and schedule those to run at some particular time or execute them on demand. Moving on to performance. Um, out of the box, uh, we're going to have a, a, um, a slew of performance monitor automatically going for you. Uh, the key ones are called key metrics and, uh, and then uh, interface monitoring. So again, simply by discovering, and uh, there is a one step to enable the monitor to make sure you want, to, you want those enabled. But once you do that, you're going to see all this data being populated. This is meant to be a health dashboard alerting you to uh, potential problems in the network. And uh, you can quickly see here that where I'm having memory problems. You know, again, this could be, these are some servers. You can see they could be switches. I can see top. If I want to see the top 25, I can see that. And so you're seeing a whole variety of things in here. And so, um, uh, so I see top memory, top disk, top CPU, top temperature. Again, alerting you to the areas you have potential problems. With simple right-click options, you can come in and perform all sorts of diagnostics, investigation. You can run action scripts. You can do change the termination if you need to, direct access. You want to go to mid-browser or terminal to do something, all sorts of things here, check performance, and all that is available to you. Uh, so that's the key metrics on the left column. In the middle here, we have things like errors, packet loss, interface errors. Across all of your interfaces, we're going to know which ones have the highest counts. And so you'll see top packet loss and top interface errors. Again, all those right-click options are here for you to go interrogate the devices in more detail. And then on the right-hand column, it's, it, this is about bandwidth. And so you're seeing the top bandwidth, the ports with the highest bandwidth percentage. So as things start to receive 80% or higher, you're going to get automatic uh, color changes, similar to what you see on memory. It'll turn red or blue or green, depending on what uh, either you've set or we have a, a whole slew of uh, default settings that will automatically alert you or send alarms when, uh, when these things reach these thresholds. So that's a very important thing here is that all of our, uh, all of our uh, um, performance monitors allow you to set thresholds and customize it if you want so that you're only alerted when things really meet the criteria that you want. Uh, we have uh, some default settings that we think are very good, um, but you may want to tune those. You can also take it a step further and define conditions. So you can maybe uh, package in, maybe you want to see something like when my memory is over 80% and my packet loss is greater than some number and my interface errors are higher than you know 100. And so you can build up these conditions and then tell it to emit an event when that happens. Again, that, that's very granular, and so it's only letting you respond to events when, when the conditions actually meet um, um, the right the right conditions, so that you can uh, take action on, for what's important. And then the next one, closely related, is traffic flow. And so once you uh, um, um, basically enable traffic flow on your devices. Uh, one or more devices can send traffic flow data in, and once you do that, you're going to immediately start seeing data on these uh, on these what we call portlets. You're seeing top application, you're seeing top protocols, you're seeing uh, top conversations by endpoints, uh, senders, receivers. Again, this is the volume of data, the highest counts in terms of bytes. Um, so you see bytes out for senders, bytes in for receivers, 
you're seeing um, you know, by subcomponent, uh, by managed resource. And so you can actually see the top volume of the data. And so this is great, but let's we want to get more granular on these. And actually, I'm going to jump over to this other demonstration. I think it has a little bit more interesting data. It's a similar layout here. Um, but what I can do here is, I, you know, I, I can see um, um, by specific exporter uh, equipment. So these are all my top-level equipment that exported the data. And these are actually the interfaces on the right, and you see subcomponents that are actually being sampled flow for those, those flow protocols. And by the way, any flow is acceptable here. IP fix, J flow, C flow, net flow, all of that can be consumed and displayed in these portlets. So um, um, when, when you get off of the top level equipment, you're seeing, when you go to applications, for example, you're seeing that aggregated across all of the devices that are exporting. You're seeing, for example, the top applications um, and that sort of thing. So what you can do on all of these portlets, and I'll just use this one as an example, is for example, I want to look at the data in more detail across this Cisco device, this C2811. I can simply click in it. And now it's showing me the data across some time period. I have a, a flexibility to set the time period to anything I want, out to years or some custom time period if I want. And then I can set the granularity of the data to you know minutes, hours, and weeks, depending on what I need to see. Um, but you know, I'm seeing I'm seeing a spike over here at this particular time frame or whatever, and so I can see that data over time. You know, sometimes you can stretch it out into a long time period and just use it more for capacity planning and see how my traffic is going over time. But what I can do here is I can then, you know, in the context of this device, I can say, okay, show me what conversations are flowing across this exporter. Now I'm seeing, you know, conversation, meaning between two IPs, what, you know, what's happening. So I'm seeing between these 54.16 and this 2.10, I'm seeing SNMP data and that traffic over time. And so I can have that, that kind of interrogation capability. I can drill in and really see with a very granular uh, lens here, see what's going on. I can even take a particular IP address. If somebody says, hey, my machine is slow every, every day at night, at night, I can come in here and either search by you know, a partial IP address or a full IP address, simply put that in and find my IP and say, okay, I want to see all the graphs related to that IP. So now I'm seeing just that endpoint and all of the graphs just in volume, but then I can say, okay, now show me the applications that that particular endpoint is using. And so now I'm seeing the applications, or I can go to conversation and see that. So you know, it gives you it gives you that kind of uh, flexibility to interrogate things. I can even search by you know, protocol if I want to come in and just type in SNMP. You know, full or partial name here. This is going to show me all the applications we've collected with the SNMP in the name. These are these are layer these are I think a layer seven applications for traffic flows. You can see all sorts of things, and I can maybe just see oh, I want to see all the graphs related to SNMP, and then I want to see you know what endpoints are using that protocol. So you know, it's very easy to, to, to carve these things out that way. So all sorts of reporting and, uh, and other ways to look at this. You can snapshot the data. Um, and you know, there's all sorts of other options here to how you want to view this and bar versus line graph kind of thing. And then moving on to the alarm alarm side. Um, you know, this is uh, just a, a general page where you're going to see all alarms. On the other dashboard, you saw focused alarms. This is you're going to see all alarms here. And so you have all the capabilities here to um, um, you know, do the same sort of Filtering by column, you know, by severity, uh, whatever you need to do here. Um, there's right-click options here specific to your particular um, um, event. You can go to the details of the alarm, look at the actual event definition related to it, modify it. Um, you can even go into the uh, on the old, on the uh, you have the ability to do root cause correlation basically with um, by setting parent-child relationships between events um, or or raising clearing uh, those kind of relationships so that you can. Uh, set your own root cause sort of analysis um, uh, for whatever event you, uh, you think you need to do that for. Uh, but anyway, right here you can do things like uh, you know, look at the topology related to that particular event, acknowledge it, assign it, clear it, clear groups of alarms, direct access to the box. You can even manually email it to somebody if you want to or see performance related to that particular um, alarm. I'm going to show you uh, something here that all these portlets that we've gone through, they have this behavior. Uh, that you can go and you click on the little plus sign in the upper right here. Um, I'm going to click on the plus sign over here. And that's going to provide me an expanded view. And I want to show you this because there's ways you can customize your view, your views more. Um, for example, I can come in here, obviously I can do quick searching here and put in a full or partial IP address, you know, just type in something here and it's going to just filter my view immediately for whatever I have a quick search. But I can also do more advanced type of uh, filtering. And I can come in here and I can build up, for example, a filter here 
And this, these options will vary obviously with Portlet, but I can come in here and build up whatever filtering I want to here and uh, simply click the Save As. Then it becomes a saved filter here that I can quickly come back to and, uh, and, and immediately come to it. Like I don't, maybe I want to see things just in the last 10 minutes. I go to my 10 minute filter and I'm immediately seeing that. And then I can, so it allows me to, to more, uh, be more focused and uh, when I'm maybe troubleshooting a problem and you know, get right to where I need to be. So we're all about doing things quickly um, in an organized way, efficiently. So we try to um, have features that allow you to do that sort of thing. And even on the summarized portlets, uh, this is what we call an expanded portlet. You have the full capability to come in here and set um, various default filtering if you want to have a specific filter whenever you come into this system. Uh, you can always, depending on the portlet, you'll have different columns that you can add in just simply by saying show or hide. You can drag and drop the orders of the columns just depending on what you need to see. That's just a bit on, on the customization. And then lastly here on reports, um, this is where we're going to uh, you know, report on everything in the system. We see uh, just a whole bunch of different reports. Um, basically, the reports are based on templates, and from a template, you create a report. And for an example, is an inventory report, and they create an inventory template, and then you might have an inventory report. Uh, the default would be that we would report on everything in your environment, but then you can, uh, you can maybe you just want a wireless report, or just a switch report, or a firewall report. Um, so you can basically then take that same template and create another report here that's just for those areas simply by filtering the report. So it allows you to use one template and the layout in that template against many different reports. So some common reports here that um, I see quite frequently are uh, things like inventory reports. Uh, so we can simply run a come in here and run an inventory report very easily just by saying execute the report on demand. And that's going to show up down here in my, my history. And uh, in a second here, it will come up and we'll come back to this. But um, and that will give you a PDF layout report. Uh, but you can also come in here and do an advanced report that allows you to uh, specify you want a PDF or you want CSV or HTML. Um, you can uh, you know, save the report, obviously, and uh, to some directory if you want to. Um, you can export this to an email. Or you can notify somebody when the report's been generated, send it to an email to a group of people. And you can even schedule this to happen. So if you have a report that you need to send out consistently, maybe it's an inventory asset report, Port report, maybe it's a bandwidth utilization report on a certain set of ports, you know, for performance reasons. Any of those kind of things, any report can be uh, sent out on a scheduled basis. You know, again, that frees you up from having to do that because somebody needs it every day, uh, every Monday morning at 10 o'clock or whatever. Um, other reports that are uh, typically, uh, oops, let me just change reports are a common thing. So, you know, we have things that we're going to alert you on the firmware change reports, the software change, the hardware change. So if you add a new stack number, take a card out of a router, um, you know, you're going to see that on these reports. Uh, and then the configuration change report is that one we talked about with the change, the drift detection, where it'll actually show you changes in config, uh, configuration files. Those are some common ones. Um, there's just a whole ton of other reports. And again, there's, a, there's a, some pre-built bandwidth utilization reports. You know, maybe you want to just see bandwidth reports for a specific time period against specific ports. Um, those are all available to you here. If you want to see which ports are underutilized, you can simply, uh, it's very easy to customize these reports to say, show me the report for the last seven days, but only with bandwidth utilization less than 1%. Now, now what you're going to get a report of just low, low used ports. Maybe you can do something more useful with those ports. Anyway, uh, uh, pretty flexible on the reporting. These templates, every, we collect so many attributes in the system. They're all available to you in what we call the report template and the attributes in the template. You simply select the attributes you want the from the category and then put those in the template and they're ready to go. Um, so there's not just table reports that you can do. You can do comparison reports, which is when you want to compare a couple of different attributes, maybe performance attributes. Then there's trend reporting for performance if you want to see a graph of uh, on your report of uh, some performance related data. Just back to that other uh, report here, just want to show you a quick example here. This is just an example of a, an asset report. Um, so you'll see here, I'll, I'll go in the middle here where there's some more interesting data. My columns are name, model, vendor, location. Those are the, those are defined in the template, and then you're just seeing the data uh, listed out here for, uh, for, for various pieces of equipment in the asset report. Okay, and then lastly, I think the, one, the only thing I want to talk about here is just I want to reemphasize the ease of use here. All of this stuff that you're seeing, and there's a lot of uh, um, features we've gone over, um, uh, and so it's very easy to, uh, um, to say, hey, there's a lot here. 
I got to configure stuff. Well, no, not really. I mean, a lot of this stuff is just ready to go for you um, out of the box. An example is, I think I mentioned the performance monitoring. You're getting that out of the box, and all the dashboards are already set there and then ready for you, to, ready to go for you. And so, uh, you know, backup groups. Um, you know, we use dynamic and static groups in the system, so you, so these groups are already there, and so you just discover a new device, and the device is automatically in the right groups. Uh, same performance, they're in the right groups, automatically getting backed up, automatically getting monitored. And so really, you know, you just can get the devices into the system through discovery, and you're pretty much good to go. Of course, there's all ways to, sorts of ways to customize, but um, that's, uh, it should be ready to go out of the box. That is our goal. Um, and so just lastly here, if I wanted to, you know, if I wanted to add a new page on something, I could simply come in here and uh, just say add the page, call it whatever I want, simply check it, and then I go to that page here, and you know, again, if you have somebody who wants a custom view, you may want to add specific applications for just their view. Maybe I want to see manage resources, you know, application. And these these are the portlets we saw throughout this entire application. And so, you know, one of them was you know traffic flowed by exporter here. Maybe you want to see that. Maybe you want to see a top end performance portlet. Simply sort select what you maybe you just want to see disk utilization, for example. Simply come over and add that to your page and refresh, and now you have your own custom page. This whoever's using this page can come in and they can set the columns, set the default filters, whatever they want to do to this page, and it will it's custom to this page, and this is their custom view, and, uh, and they can just come to this page whenever they want to. So very easy to do. Okay, that uh, there's a lot of information there. I hope you uh, hope this was helpful, and uh, um, I look forward to uh, seeing you in the next video.